Hey, today we're uh, dealing with 5.3, graphing radical functions, and just remember, okay, this is fun. All right. Radical fun. Very true. Okay, so page 133 is student journal. I want to work you to work with your groupies. Answer. Hey, need your attention up here. That means everyone's done talking. Okay, I want you to work together. Answer these questions without a calculator, please. Okay. Make sure you know why you are choosing, making your selections on those. <laughs> hey, time's up. Can I have your attention back up here? So, let's start with the graphs. Taking a look at the graphs, which function goes with graph A? D? I said A. Which function goes with graph A? Function C. So f of x. Okay. Letter B, which function goes with graph B? D? I assume everyone's saying D? <laughs> yes. All right, D is in dog, okay? How about graph C? E. B. And graph D, I'm assuming, is A. Okay, now the question is why? Haley? Okay. Hey, so you're looking, when you're comparing A and D, you're looking at the rate at which one increases. Okay. Now, if I'm saying that this, let's come back to that here in a minute. I, that, that'll be something we use for sure. Riley? Okay. So you actually use... You, you said A, 1, 1, it looks like that, and 2 looks like, okay, 4, 2, that, and that doesn't, okay, good. So you actually plotted some points. How did you know that these, like this one didn't go with this one? Like, this isn't the root of X. Yeah? Good. Your, your values for x cannot be negative when you have an even root. So these values over here cannot be included when you have even roots. Okay? At least in this situation. There, you'd have to have, you'd have to be adding and subtracting something on the inside. Good. Okay, so let's go back to what Haley said, talking about um, how quickly it goes goes out. Now, I'm, when I talk about how quick it's moving away from here, from this point, I am going to be talking about how quickly it's approaching infinity on the x-axis. Okay? So how quickly, which one's moving quicker towards infinity on the x-axis? The A or D? A would be, right? You know, when you're dealing with radical functions, this number right here this number right here, if, if it's a fourth root, it's going to go faster. Okay? If it's a second root or a square root, it's going to be slower relatively to the to the fourth root. Yeah? Kind of like if you turn it sideways, it would be like this. Like this. Yeah. 
because the other one is more normal squared looks more like a normal um, a square quadratic in yeah, yeah, very true. If I was to turn this sideways, this this looks like one leg of a quadratic. I mean, if we continue, you have the other leg, right? You have parabola. This would be more flat at the bottom. It would be your fourth root. Okay? Hey, and you guys, that's a, that's a key piece, and it's something we haven't talked about in here, but really a, a, uh, a radical function... A radical function is the inverse of a square root function. An inverse means it's been reflected over the line y equals x. Okay, so if I reflect my graph, then I'm going to end up with my square root. So where I have 1, 1, better yet, let's go with what Riley said earlier. It's like he, he is at 2, or excuse me, 4 on the x-axis and 2 on the y-axis. Okay, this is the ordered pair 4, 2. Okay. When you do inverses, that ordered pair, now we'd actually have to have it on this side, but that point would be over here at 2, 4. Okay? All right. Anyway, that's something we'll get into later, but yeah, that's very true. It, a quadratic. This one is. This one's the inverse of a fourth degree function. Okay? All right. But we're not... I'm not terribly worried about that right now, but that's good. That's good uh, visual. And the same thing happens here. This is a cubic function, right? You guys know what a cubic looks like. The cube root is the inverse of that. Okay? It's a reflection over this line right here, the y equals x line. Good stuff, man. All right. Very good. Any other, any other comments or questions there? All right, let's go ahead and take a look at exploration number two. Next page. Okay, on exploration number two, going through the same process. Okay. All right, hey, what do you guys think? Exploration number two. Part, actually, let's go with the graphs again. I know you guys love this, but graph A. Okay, G of X equals the root of X plus two. How about graph B? C? Okay, C? Okay, and the last one, D? Okay, what, what are we using there that we've used in the past? Yeah. You're using vertex form, okay, using tran transformations, right? So you guys remember HK? If we just say um, H of X is equal to um, X minus H plus K, right? So we're dealing with, when we're dealing with this, we're talking about horizontal shifts, And vertical shifts. Okay, HK. Who cares, right? HK. Okay. Hey, I'd worry about uh, my spelling there, but who cares? This is why you're um, not an English teacher. <laughs> Whatever. I have to make fun of it. All right. Okay. Hey, guys. All jokes aside, remember inside here, we talked about, earlier in the year, we talked about really we're looking at what makes this zero. Now, it's very easy if X is by itself and it's truly in vertex form to be able to say, well, um, it's this is a plus, so it's actually that, since that says minus, this would have to be a negative 2 to make that make that become a positive. So negative 2, and then there's nothing on the outside, plus 0. That's where that point, it goes from here back to here. Okay, And the same thing on this one. This has a vertex of 
negative 2, and then negative 2 going downward. Okay, this one right here, this one has a vertex of negative 2, 0 as well. But notice how, how it opens down. What's causing that to open downward? The negative. What's this thing doing right here? What's that negative doing? Good. It's reflecting it over the x-axis. Now, for those of you tuning out, this this is this, some of this is review, and I'm trying to relate it to what you already know. So hopefully it seems easy, and it's going to we're going to keep building on it. Okay. Remember, this reflects over the x-axis. If the negative was on the inside, where would it reflect? Over the y-axis. Okay. So a little foreshadowing there. And here, what's this? Two zero. You guys made fun of my language arts, but then I use the foreshadowing. It's the only word I use. Okay? All right. There we got it. So it's moving that point around. Now, if we're dealing with this in terms of cubics, we're going to see how that moves here in a minute in fifth degrees as well. Okay. Any questions? I'm going to let you answer um, three and four on your own. Um, but before you can do that, you actually have to, you can't actually answer four unless you do the last part of this, which says identify the domain and range. So, how many of you did that? Uh, all right, go ahead and identify the domain and range. Okay, can I have your attention back up here? Domain, where x exists for this graph. So x starts right here on the x-axis, and it's going towards the right, so it's getting bigger. And since it's a closed dot, it could be equal to negative 2. How about y? Starts at what? Using the y-axis as your measuring stick now. Starts at 0. Okay. And at zero, it's getting bigger. It can it be zero? Yeah. It is right there. Okay. So your range, then your domain. Remember, deals with this axis right here. So somehow make a note to yourself. If you'd forgotten what those mean, domain, range. Make sure that you recognize, hey, domain goes with the x-axis, range goes with that y-axis. Okay? Really, you're using this point right here, which we call the vertex, right? We're using that as our, as our starting point there. Okay? How about on this one? Domain and range? X is? Okay. Since we got D on the screen, how about D? Okay. And last one. Y is less than or equal to zero, and it's opening downward, right? So we have to change it to less than them. Okay. Now if you want to spend some time on 3 and 4, I'm going to let you do that on your own to summarize that. But Any questions on domain and range? Pretty radical stuff. All right. Why don't you take a look at page 135 in your student journal. Kind of look that, make any notes you need to based upon your amazing experience with the uh, explor exploration there. Okay. Okay, if you turn the page to 136, you should see this. Okay, and you guys, just please, please remember when you're dealing with the shifts here, horizontal happens inside with the X. Vertical happens outside of the parentheses. It's not inside with the x. So there are implied parentheses in a radical function. They're being held in with that 
little roof above the square root symbol there, or with the square root symbol. Okay, anything on the outside affects you vertically. Anything on the inside affects you horizontally. All right, so that's a just a quick reminder based upon what we studied earlier in the year. All right, really what I want to do right now, though, is spend some time on the... Um, on graphing some of these. So if you'll look at page 137 of your student journal, okay, we're going to work through number one and two together. I'm going to graph the function, so if you'll take that out and just kind of spend a little time looking at that. Okay. It would be helpful. It'd be helpful for you if, um, if as you uh, do this, you keep a table of values. Okay, so I want to go through on how to do this without your graphing calculator. Okay, so off to the side, the table I'm going to use. We'll focus in on. Let me focus in on number one. So graph the function, identify the domain and range. The table I'm going to use is going to have a place for x. Give myself some more space and then at the end have place for y. Okay, and then I have my place to show my work in here. So this is the cube root of negative 3x and plus 1. Alright, fill your navel with the vertex. Okay, where's the vertex? Zero one, okay. So if I know the vertex 0, 1, that means my point's right there. Something's happening right there. Okay, now this is a cubic. That means it's going to be jetting out in both directions. Or excuse me, a cube root, not a cubic. But So when I, when I put 0 in for x, I'm going to get 1 out for y. I should, because that's my vertex. So if I wanted to double check that, I could, you know, cube root of 3 or negative 3 times 0 plus 1. Well, the cube root of 0 is 0 plus 1 is 1. So yeah, it worked out. Okay. Now, if I put in 1, well, the cube root of negative 3 times 1 plus 1 I don't know that. I can't do it in my head. So I'm going to let you guys do it. Any thoughts? Negative zero point four four two two four nine five seven zero three. Negative zero point four four. Can we round it there? Okay, so we get one and negative zero point four four. So it looks like right there ish. Okay. And two. Estimate about negative 1.82. Sound right? You guys got to check my work. I was doing that in my head. Negative 1.81? Okay. Cool. Negative, was it negative 2? Negative 0 0.82? Yes. 
Oh. Thank you. That's why I say you got to check my work. Let's do it in my head. Thank you for checking my work. All right. Cool? How about negative one? Negative two. I'll let you guys figure those two out. Well, it's not pretty, but it's like better than 2.4, 2.4, 9, 5, 7. <laughs> <laughs> I guess my negative. You know what? It just does, okay? I don't need your judgment in my life. Okay, did you guys get those? Tell your neighbor what you notice about the distance away that is from 1 and that one is from 1. And how about that one from one and that one from one? Kind of crazy math stuff, huh? Okay, I am going to stop right there, which means I'm not extending my graph anymore horizontally. You could keep going. I'm not going to have you do that. Okay. What is the domain? One second? We're not even dealing with time. Yeah. Okay, tell your neighbor what the domain and range are. Okay, volunteer, what's the domain? Yes. All real numbers. It's Hey, it's never going to stop expanding horizontally. It's all real numbers. How about the range? It's never going to stop expanding vertically. It's also all real numbers. Okay? If you guys are cool, next time you get your hair cut, ask them to cut that into the back. You're sweet. You're like, dude, you know, being followed around by all real numbers. Pretty, pretty cool. Okay, maybe not. My friend's hoping I should shave my head. Yeah, don't do that. Okay, number two, give it a go. Make sure you ask me as I walk around if you got questions. All right, done talking about my hair. All right, here we go. So, as you're working through this, it may help to remember that that one half means it's square root. So that's two to the square root, or two times, not two to the. 2 times the square root of x minus 5, and then all that minus 4. And so, if I, how many of you tried 0? How many figured the vertex first? Good, what's the vertex? 5, negative 4. Okay, 5, that's what makes this 0 in here. And negative 1, and I can't take the square root of a negative, so we have to imagine those, and those aren't good. Okay, so all this stuff, all this extra space I left up here is really worthless, because I can't use that part of my table. I have to count down from 6. So I'm going to go ahead and utilize the space I have, and get rid of that 5 and that 4, and I'm going to put it at the very top, 5 and negative 4. Okay, and then you don't have to do that. All of you type A'ers who are stressed out that I just moved that. Okay, I feel your pain, but that's why I carry a big eraser. At least keep one up here. I don't actually bring that with me. usually have a pen. Okay, so next number I'd use is 6. Why 6? Because it's right after 5. Oh, because it's right after 5? You guys sure? Because it's a positive. It's like right after 5. Hey, what is 6 minus 5? One. 1. What's nice about 1? Come on. Hey, in context context of what we're doing, what's nice about 1? It's a perfect... Good. It's a perfect number. 1 minus... Or square root of 1 is 1. Times 2 is 2. Minus 4 is... Negative 2. Okay? What's the next number I should use? 
Why nine? Nine minus five is four. Square root of four is two. Two times two is four. Minus four is that's an awful lot of fours. Okay. What's the next one I should use? I should try to make 16. That would make it easy. But how do I make 16 if I have a 5? 14. 14 minus 5? Actually, I should try I guess that's making 9, right? Okay. That would probably be good. Okay. Square root of 9 is 3. Minus, or times 2 is 6. Minus 4 is 2. Now, I'm going to stop right there. I think that's plenty. Okay. Now... If I'm actually going to graph this, I need to be able to get 6 and negative 2 on there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start my grid over here. I could actually probably start it over one more if I wanted. Okay, put my x-axis, or my y-axis, excuse me. And then I need to have be able to get negative 4. I'm just going to split it down the middle, I think. Call it good. Okay. All right. 5, negative 4. Now I'm going to get to 14. I'm going to go up by 2's on my x. 18. So I'll label the end as 18. Okay. 2, 4, 5. And then down to 4. Okay. I'm going to keep the y as going up by 1's. 6, negative 2, 2, 4, 6, uh, 9, 0, Fourteen two. Did I? You're supposed to be on the team down on the Oh, yes. Thank you. Good call. Yeah, I misplaced that last one. Well, did you misplace it? Don't just, don't just copy me. What? There we go. Thank you. Okay, what's the domain? Range? Okay, once again, domain and range, you're using your vertex. That point right there to help you out. I know. All right, questions? Very good.